All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm back again. I'm just been dropping video like boom, 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 back to back. So I'm, I'm gonna start doing these little quick hitters too, um, uh, like little quick videos and things like that every now and then. So definitely be expecting that sometimes you'll see one, two, three, same day. Sometimes you may, sometimes you may not. It depends. But I'm still not done with the other rants. If you've been watching the videos, you already know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me go ahead, uh, go to my channel, of course, youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter, because I shoot out scripture and information. All right, so um, you already know I get on the women, I get on the men, I get on everybody. Look, I even got on myself. I did a video right here, Judah the Shooter. Judah, I even got on myself. So nobody's above correction. Um, let's see uh, where are we at uh, right here. Israelite brothers worth marrying. So I'm bringing this out so you can't get in your feelings. Uh, did one um, Israelite sisters worth marrying. I got on the men and the women. This one right here, the mistreatment of sister wives, polygyny, of course. Did that, did the asthma to the Lord. Um, let's see, you name it. Um, so I got a few videos. This is a really good one. Daughters of Sarah versus Daughters of Satan. Waiting to be alone. Definitely want to uh, watch that. Uh, definitely want to watch this video here. She has no heads and she's rebellious. We fire's coming. So uh, definitely going to men, definitely going to women. Uh, you name it. So with that being said, I'm not being biased. You already know what it is. Due to the shooter. Coming back at you with another one, propolybook.com is where you can get the book, The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny. But you already know that. But let's go ahead and get to the topic at hand. So, ladies and gents, there is a scripture that is um, widely misunderstood or not fully understood, as I would say. So we're going to go ahead and visit that. Uh, for my Hebrew readers, we're going to Sefer Bereshit, chapter 3. Sefer Bereshit, chapter 3. What am I talking about? The book of Genesis, chapter three. Let's go ahead and grab that really quick. Uh, Genesis three. All right, verse 16. All right. So before we get started, go ahead and give you a chance to get there. Question, is your wife just like Eve? Or is that woman just like Eve? Do she have the spirit of Eve on her? She may have it on her and may not even know it. May not even realize it. All right. So. Um, I guess before we get started on that, let me grab really quick. Hold on, let me share my screen. Um, this here. Hold on one second. Ah, let me go back and here we go. Let me show the screen real quick. I want to grab something real quick. Second Thessalonians chapter two, real quick. Um, it says verse ten. It says, and with all deceitfulness, right? Many lies of unrighteousness, of them that perish, destroyed. It says, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, meaning this reason, because they didn't want to receive the love of the truth, because God should send them what? A strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So you can be a person that can be walking around with a strong delusion on you because you don't want to receive the love of the truth, that you might be saved. Says they, I mean, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but a pleasure in, in what? Unrighteousness. So hopefully you are not a person that's going around with um, a strong delusion. So let's go ahead and deal with something here. Uh, Genesis 3 and 16. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to read it in English first. I'm going to show you something that you might not be aware of when you go into the Hebrew text. So it says, Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. And sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire and him shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. Now, that's something that, for the most part, never fully makes sense. Now, we know, of course, this is after the sin in the garden between Eve, of course, who deceived her husband. She was the first sinner or the lawbreaker or in the transgression. Um, notice it said that your desire should be to your husband. She should rule over you. Now, one could read that as, oh, she's going to want you. Well, so, well, then why did it say she should rule over you then? Like what that have? I mean, he should rule over you. What that got to do with anything? There's something that seems like that there is a bit missing. Hmm. Let's go ahead and go into the text really quick. All right, so I'll go ahead and read it first. So we have El Isha Omar Harba Arbe Esvonech 
vahi ronech pe etzev tzol di bani ve'el ishech teshu chatech. That word, right? This one here. Then we have here the who yimshal bad. So to the woman, he said, I will greatly. Then we have the word multiply your pain, your uh, depression. And right here, it lets me know, and your conception. And in sorrow and depression, has the word yalad, or um, yeah, yalad, uh, let you know you should bring forth children. Is it yalad? Yeah, yalad. Yeah. Then it says, banim, which is children or sons. And it says, the el, um, and to, isheikh, and to your husband, right here. This word right here. Right there. So I'm going to skip that first. And it says, and he, yimshal, bad, and he shall rule over you. It has a root word of mashal. Mashal, which means to rule. To, let's go ahead and read that real quick. Um, you know, you should rule. Mashal, right here, it means to rule, to have dominion, reign, to have dominion, cause to rule. Mashal, again, to rule, to have dominion, governor. Indeed, reign, bear, cause to have rule or ruling or what? Have power. Now, I talked about this in one of my videos that I did. Um, this and here, the as unto the Lord. And I did speak a little bit about this, but I figured like, you know what? Let me spend a little more time on this real quick. So we see right here that he's letting us know, um, according to English, you should have desire to your husband and he shall dominate or rule or govern over you or have power over you. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? Hmm. This here, Teshukatech. Now, in one sense, yes, desire, longing, lust, want, but a sense of urgency, an urge, passion, and a sense of control. So he's saying right here that, and to your husband, of course, um, um, oh, yeah, um, to, um, um, the saying that the woman will have desire to control her husband, but he shall rule over her. He shall have power over her. So it says, and to your husband shall your desire be, or your desire to control be, and he shall rule over you. Over you. Now, that sounds a lot like the spirit of Eve today women who have desires to control over their husbands. I luckily, feel blessed that it's not me. I'm not going through that. All praise to the most high. But there are brothers who go through this on a day-to-day -day basis. The woman seeks to control her husband. And we're going to go deep into this in a second. But I want to stop and talk for a second. She tries to control her husband through her rage, through her passion, through her desire. She tries to do it through passive aggressiveness behavior, narcissistic behavior. Yes, we see that. You sisters can be narcissistic as well. Yes, you can be bitter too. They try to do this. They do this by trying to what? Destroy his character. They'll talk about something, a flaw you did back in 1992, just to try to get power over you. And she does certain things. She rallies up a clique of sisters. You name it. Whatever she can do so people can, can come together to have that dominance over you. That's what she does. Verbal abuse. Women do it too. You know, I speak about the men, but you sisters do it too. Physical abuse. You women do it too because you are desiring to control your husband. Yimshaw. Mashal. You have that urgency to do that, that desire to do that. Wow. So let's go here real quick. Go to Genesis 3 again. Once again, it says unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. And sorrow shall you bring forth children. Your desire to be to your husband in a sense of control, which most of you don't know that. And he shall rule over you. Let's go to the NET version here. Let's see what that says. Let's give it just a few. 
says to the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your labor pains. With pain, you, you will give birth to children. Oh, yeah, that is. Ooh. You will want to control your husband, but he will dominate you. So, yes, you will have your desire to your husband. That urgency, that longing for your husband. But the longing to do what? To control him. That's not talking about you will want your husband. That's general knowledge. Of course, you're going to want your husband, desire your husband, lust for your husband. But that there is saying you will what? You will be dominated. You will be dominated. Remember, she already usurped authority over her husband. How does she do that? She went and started dealing with Satan in the garden. And he's saying right there, I am going to change gears on you. <laughs> You're going to want to control your husband. He's going to dominate you. Wow. He's going to dominate you. Let's get another one really quick. Um, and it says, 16 NLT. See what that says. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and I, I mean, and in pain, you will give birth and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. He will rule over you. Now, when women start getting their feelings, when they start being just like Eve, what are some of the things that they do? What are some of the things that they do? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13. Which says, Proverbs 9 and 13, it says, A foolish woman is what? Clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Clamorous. Look at this. To murmur, complain, growl, roar, cry loud, mourn, rage, sound, make noise. Tumult, be clamorous, be disquieted, be loud, be moved. Look at this, to be in an uproar. Wow. That's what she does. That's what she does, brothers. Is your wife just like Eve? Is she just like Eve? Hmm. Let's go ahead and, matter of fact, let's go here to Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 and let's get the 13th verse it says get me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman look at that wow is your wife just like eve wow let's jump down here look at this i'd rather dwell with the lion and the dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman with a wicked woman the wickedness of a woman changes her face. You know, when they get mad, oh, wait. You can see it all on their face and on their countenance. Mm. And darkness her countenance or appearance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, when he heard, he shall sigh bitterly. <laughs> wow. All wickedness is but, but little wickedness to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. That's talking about death. Wow. Mm, 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 to the wicked woman. Remember this here? Um, I hear he he rather live with the lion and the dragon to keep house with a wicked woman. Is that in your regular standard King James Version Bible? Yeah. It is better to do it in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling or contentious woman in the wide house, meaning in a big house. Wow, look at verse 19. It's better to live in the middle of nowhere, the wilderness, than with the contentious and angry woman. Contentious. Brawling. Contentious. Look at that, brawling. Wow. A contentious and angry woman. Wow, wow, wow. Let's go back to Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. And we're going to go to chapter 25, ladies and gents. Um, remember, he said again here. Um, here we go. I'd rather dwell with the lion and the dragon to keep house with a wicked woman. With a wicked woman is what he's saying. Go to chapter 26. 
says a solid and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You sisters want to be a gift? You got to be solid and loving. And it said there's nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Why? Be that woman already knows what to do. She knows better. You don't have to tell her why. Because she's well instructed. She's receiving instructions. Wow. A shamefaced and faithful woman is double great. That's a double give, y'all. And her contented mind cannot be valued. You can't even put a price on it. It's That's something that is unmeasurable. Her endless charm, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Can't measure that. Let's jump down real quick. It says, a dishonest woman can tend to shame, meaning disgrace. Ooh, we. But an honest woman, she will reverence her husband. Reverence her husband. Now, wait a minute. Proverbs 31, right? Give not your strength unto women, nor your way that which destroyeth kings. Let's go down here. Um, she will do him good and not evil. How many days, y'all? All the days of her life. All the days of her life, ladies and gents. Sisters, are you doing your husband good and not evil every single day? If not, are you just like Eve? Do you have the spirit of Eve on your sister? Hmm. What about the Ecclesiasticus? All right. Says a shameless woman, not shame faced, but a shameless woman shall be counted as a doll. But she that is shame faced will fear the Lord. Now, wait a minute. Let's put the scripture right here, right quick. Huh? Let's go uh, a verse before that as well. Let's put these two verses down here. All right. So, First Timothy, real quick. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. It says, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, dress modest, respectful, with shamefacedness and sobriety. Well, wait, what is shamefacedness? What that mean? Let's go here. Shamefacedness. Look at this. That's the idea of downcast eyes. She's bashful. She's shy towards men. Modesty, all oh, reverence, shamefacedness. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Then they say right here, a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shame-faced, that bashful, downcast eyes, shy, that woman's going to fear God. Hmm. She's going to fear God. Fear God. Now, I want to show you all something really quick. Let me share this screen real quick once again. Okay. Let's go to Google. Um, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Um, oh shoot, what was I gonna show you all? Oh yeah, so Rock twenty six, the New Testament, boom. That is twenty one. Look at this. Look at what it says here. This is a shameless wife enjoys making disgrace of herself, but a modest wife she will act modestly even alone with her husband. A self weird woman is what? A bitch. But a woman with a sense of decency honors the Lord. A wife who honors her husband would seem wise to everyone. But if she dishonor him with her overbearing attitude, everyone would know that she is ungodly. Fortunate or blessed is the husband of a good wife because he will live twice as long. A loud mouth talkative woman is like a trumpet sounding the signal for attack. Look at that. And any man who has such a wife will spend his life at war. He's going to spend his life at war, ladies and gents. Do you want to spend your life at war, brothers? Sisters, are you just like Eve? Do you have the spirit of Eve on you? Mm, mm, mm. Let's go back to, um, matter of fact, remember said that she was ungodly. That woman would be considered to be ungodly. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 9. It says, for the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike. Hateful unto God. Sisters, do you want to be hateful to God? I hope not. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. A woman that honor her husband shall be judged wisely of all, but she that dishonor him in her pride will be counted ungodly. And we see he hates the ungodly, ladies and gents. Look at verse one. 
Blesses the man to have a virtuous wife. Chayil in Hebrew, virtuous. For the number of his days shall be double. It'll be as if he lived twice as long. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. She gives him peace, in other words. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Not stress, but in peace. Wow. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 26. Yeah, many that be that run out of their wits for women. Man, she running me to my wits end, brother. I don't know what to do. And become service for their sake. Oh, boo boo, are you okay? Are you mad? He become a simp. That's what that means, right? That he become a simp for her sake. Many also have perished. That means they have died and have erred. That means they have went away. They have strayed away and have sinned for who? For women. Is your wife running you to your wits end, brother, by trying to control you, trying to control the situation? If so, she has the spirit of Eve on her. Is she being an Eve? These are just a few things. Now, yes, brothers, you know I've been getting on y'all lately, but it's the sister's turn. Oh, it's your turn. Everybody gets a turn, including me. We all get a turn. And it's your turn today, sisters. Your turn. Go back. First Timothy. Chapter 2. Let the woman learn what's... Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get a different verse. Let's go to the good word version. It says, a woman must learn in silence in keeping with her position. Mm, that means what? Her position is what? Silence. That means she's in subjection. I did not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over the man. Instead, she should be quiet. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Mm, mm, mm. You know what that reminds me of real quick? Hold on. Let me show you. Verse 14. A solid and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. That also reminds me of 1 Peter. Chapter 3. Um... In verse four, about the, we're talking to the woman, let it be the hidden man in the heart, meaning her spirit, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of a great price. So, sisters, you want to be a great price? Yes, go ahead. Do that. You have a meek and quiet spirit. You want to be a gift of the Lord? The scriptures say be silent. Likewise, you wives, being subjected to your own husband, that if any, you're talking about the husband, obey not the word. They also may, without the word, mean the husband. Look at this. You can win him over by the conversation of the wife. What is the conversation? Does that mean talk? No, it means your behavior. You can win your husband over by you being in subjection. That means to obey, be under submission. 1 Timothy 2. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, subordination. That means you're being subordinate, following directions. Hmm. Look at that. Let's go ahead and get the ISV. A woman must learn quietly and submissively. Moreover, in the area of teaching, I'm not allowing a woman to what instigate violence toward a man. Instead, she is to remain calm, meaning silence. But Adam was was uh formed first, then Eve, and it was not Adam who was deceived, but it was the woman who was deceived and became a lawbreaker. Look at that. Became a lawbreaker. Let's get another one real quick the new version look at this a woman should learn in silence with all humility i do not allow them to teach or to have authority over the men but they must keep quiet if adam was created first then eve and it was not adam who was deceived it was the woman who was deceived and broke god's law wow let's go to first corinthians chapter 14 Verse 33, look at this. Because God does not want us to be in disorder, but in harmony and peace. And all churches of God's people are the saints. And that the woman should keep quiet in the meetings. They are not allowed to speak. But as Jewish law says, they must not be in charge. And if they would find, if they want to find out anything, they should ask the husbands at home. It is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church meeting. The King James Version says what? I ain't dead. It says, but God is not the author of confusion. Christians say that all the time, but of peace and is all churches of the saints. Thank you, women. 
keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted or allowed unto them to speak. But they're commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, not teach anything, but learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame or disgrace women to speak in the church. Mm. It said under obedience. That's right there. That means what? To obey. Wow. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame. What is shame? Shameful. In decorum, that's disgrace. Wow. Look at that. Now, when you bring this out, women who have the spirit of Eve have a problem with that. They have an issue with that. Why? Because they have the spirit of Eve. They have the desire to control. Desire to control. Check it out, sis. This is what you should be doing. Right here. Um, Titus 2. That the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as come as holiness. Hold on, let me go. That they become as holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. I mean, she can't be what? A drunk. Teach of good things that they may teach who? The young women to be sober. That means what? Of a sound mind. Look at this. To love their husbands, love their children, to be discreet. Look at this. Self-control. Look at that. Temperate, discreet, chaste, properly clean, innocent, modest, perfect. That's what y'all should be teaching. Keepers at home. You know what that means. Good, obedient. What? To their own husbands. Obedient. There it is right there to obey. Are you sisters teaching other women to obey your husband? If not, you have the spirit of Eve on you. Yes, you do. You got the spirit of Eve on you. But that's okay, because guess what? The good news is you can repent now. Not later, but now. It says that the word of God be not blasphemed. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Check this out, sister. Saying this to save your life. All right? So rock five. So, um... Be swift to hear and let your life be sincere and with patience give answer. If you have understanding, ask your neighbor. If not, lay your hand upon your mouth. If you don't know, lay your hand upon your mouth. Lay your hand upon your mouth, ladies and gents. All right? Make no tarrying, meaning waiting to turn to the Lord. And put not off from day to day. Do not procrastinate on this. Don't be waiting. Turn to the Lord now. Repent now. Because for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in your security, all you women, oh, I love a man that brings security. Oh, look at this. In your security, say so you shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Do not be the one that's going to be destroyed, ladies and gents. Do not. Hebrews 10, 26 says, For if we sin willfully or deliberately, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice or forgiveness or, I mean, for sins. Sisters, this is to save your life. Now, when I get on the brothers, y'all be cheering and clapping. Huh? I talk about the domestic violence. I talk about brothers. Uh, but hold on. One of the things here, Colossians 3. Read it. Why submit to your own husbands as it fits in the Lord? Yes. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. I speak against domestic violence and things like that. Hmm? Y'all know. Y'all cheered. Y'all was happy. Y'all celebrated. When I did this video right here, the mistreatment of sister wives and polygyny, boom. Y'all cheered. Y'all celebrated. Right? When I did the are Israelite brothers worth marrying? Y'all cheered. Y'all celebrated. Ooh, we. Y'all did. Yes, y'all did. But now the shoe is on the other foot and you want to control. Why? He said unto the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you will give birth and you will desire to control your husband. But, but he will rule or dominate over you. He will dominate over you. So, 
question is, the question is, do you sisters have the spirit of evil? You got the spirit of evil on you? Do you desire to control your husband? It don't have to be physical. But you know what you'd be doing when you anger and you in your feelings and you don't get your way. Slamming doors, talking under your breath, tears, lying, manipulation, sarcasm, reverse psychology, telling his business, destroying his stuff, his property, trying to destroy his character, lying on him, bearing false witness, painting a picture of him as the bad guy, using your children. That's a big one. Using your children, putting them on child support, which is extortion. That's another topic, though. But these are the things that you do. Why? Because you desire to control. You desire to have authority over the man. Do you have the spirit of Eve in you? Do you? Huh? You sisters will go get a brother who may not know much about it and lie to him about the Bible. Oh, the Bible says this. You sisters even try to control the way the brother got to do poly. A righteous brother. Why? Because you desire to control your husband. You want to desire, I mean, you want to you want to have the desire to control how he should do it. That's for brothers that desire to do it. But yes, you sisters, yes, your desire shall be to your husband. Your longing and your want will be for your husband. Your lust will be for your husband. But we know that that means your desire to your husband. But he will rule, dominate, have power over you. Do you got the spirit of evil? 